on November 27, 2022. As we gather and as we enter into worship, we are mindful that this is the first Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of light. Our call to worship is taken from Psalm 119, verses 102 through 105. In these verses, the author is declaring their personal affirmation of faith and God's guidance in their lives. May these words unite our hearts and guide us onto a path of worship. I have not departed from your laws, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong path. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. Come, let us worship the Lord. Him. 
Jesus came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. It is easy to look at our world and observe a world filled with darkness. It is not so easy to look at our world and see the light of the world. And yet the fulfillment of all that Jesus accomplished is celebrated and reminds us on this morning that Jesus was and Jesus is the light of the world for all who receive him. And that already in this lifetime, we have the privilege of being the children of God. May that light shine brightly in each one of our lives. Amen. Amen. And we light the first candle of Advent, light.
We know that there are those who are isolated. We know that there are those within our church family, within our communities, within the circles of people that we work with that are struggling, continuing to live through this difficult era of the COVID, continuing to live with the pressures of life, of inflation, for some, housing insecurity, job insecurity, food insecurity. And especially for those who are experiencing isolation and don't know where to get help, we pray that there will be those who will reach out and touch their lives, that there will be witness born to avenues of help and relief, and that a compassion would continue to fill our nation and governments around the world and special organizations that are committed to work and to support and to empower those who are most vulnerable. In a general sense, we lift up and ask your continued blessing and power, but in a specific sense, may each one of us be mindful of these agencies within our own community, not only formally, but our own agency to reach out to comfort, to encourage, and to help meet what is necessary for life and vitality. Lord, hear our prayer. And we know that as we come into your presence in all circumstances with thanksgiving, that you have invited us to present our petitions. As a church family, we continue to share prayer concerns. We continue to be engaged with one another's lives, to be a community of love, to reach out and to communicate, and to, when we know, be united together in prayer, united for healing for those who need to know your presence with Jesus as a great physician, united and asking that for those who are undergoing tests and medical treatment, that the very best medicine, the very best course of treatment would be provided to them. And that as we ask for excellence and care and healing and restored strength, we always add that the people that we pray for would personally know your loving presence in their lives, turn to you and receive your love as a gift. And with this in mind, we continue to uphold the following by first name. Peggy, Tyler, Nancy M, Peggy, Carol's sister, Dory, Judy S, Carol herself who is anticipating surgery, Sandy, and Joyce B. Gracious God, these are some of the members of our church that we know need your presence and your encouragement and healing as we have expressed. Lord, hear our prayer. And along with these individuals, we celebrate, as we've been reminded recently, of the significance of Marion's family in our community. What an extraordinary gift to have people part of our church that were raised in Hingham. And in the case of Marion's family with her three sisters, shared the heritage of not only being African American, but also of being Indian, predominantly part of the Wampanoag tribe. And as we celebrate this unique family in our midst, and Marion as being the sole survivor of those four sisters, but with the presence of her daughter and granddaughter and nieces still a part of our church. We praise you as we continue to commit Marion into your care, asking that between now and March, she will remain well as we look forward to celebrating 100 years. What a blessing. Lord, hear our prayers. With gratitude, you have heard our prayers. With gratitude, we have received your blessings. With gratitude, we return just a portion of what you've entrusted to our management and our care to empower your ministry here in this church and to empower the missions that we support, both in the immediate community as well as through our 
denomination around the world. Move us to be generous because you are the one who have provided for all of our needs. Lord, and now unite us together as we, with one voice, pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 